Okay, I have open uh, the file in the exercises area called layers and groups. And uh, here we're going to get into a little bit more of <clears throat> layer management and understanding groups, um, how to make them, how to break them, and how to edit them. Um, so we've gone over a little bit about layers um, today today <laughs> well whatever day you're watching this um, which is today so I wasn't that far off um, we're we're gonna get into a little bit more cool management stuff so we have this image of the submarine in water and let's just say that we wanted to start to manage our layers a bit so that um, we had things sort of isolated in their own space. And as we end up designing an illustrator and creating projects, it really is a good idea to keep things um, sort of in, a, in an organized fashion, separated to layers, um, uh, groups, whatever. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the water, I'm gonna put the water on its own layer. And uh, the easiest way to do that is just to go to my new layer window, click on the new layer button at the bottom, and I now have a new blank layer called layer two. I could rename that layer water. And uh, in order for me to get the water from this original layer one to the new water layer, I'm going to select it with my selection tool. And what's really cool is that since layer one has, if I open up the little twirly, all of these paths that constitute this illustration, you can see that there's a lot of things in here, all the little windows, the fins, um, the, you know, little whatever, red little line, and so on. And at the very bottom is this path for the water. And you can tell that the water is selected because, like I said in the last video, there's this little, you know, selected square on the right side of that layer. But instead of having to go dig for it, I can collapse layer one and see that there's still this little, a, a smaller square sitting right on the right side of layer one. And this little smaller square represents anything that is selected. Um, in this case, it's just the water layer. So the water I have selected, I don't have to go digging for it in order to move it into my new water layer. All I have to do is grab that little red dot on the side of layer one and move it up into the water layer. And now we have the water that's on its own layer. And the problem is now the water is obscuring the uh, submarine. It actually looks a bit more realistic. Because, um, you know, maybe it's really thick water and we just can't see the submarine beneath it. But if we're going to fix it, we want to see the submarine, the entire thing. We could just take the water layer, manage it so that it's at the bottom of the stacking order. So I drag that layer down to the bottom. Now the submarine is back in view. So um, we're gonna we're gonna do a little more management of this thing just to kind of um, get it so that uh, we can experiment um, with. Uh, this sort of technique and some other selection techniques. So what I'd like to do next is select my layer one. Actually, it doesn't even matter if I select on it or not for what I'm going to do next. I would like to take um, the, the little tail fins and put them in their um, own uh, layer again. So I'm going to select those three little tail fins. Doom, doom. And I'm going to create a new layer. In this case, instead of a new layer, I'm going to create a new sub-layer. So the new sub-layer is put inside layer 1 because layer 1 was selected. Oh, I guess that's why I would select layer 1. And I said earlier it doesn't matter if you select it or not. It does matter. As long as layer 1 is selected and you hit new sub-layer, um, then it'll throw in a layer inside and tuck it in at the top of layer one. So here I could just take all three of those selections and drag them into this new sub-layer. 
The, the bummer about that is that he doesn't do it all at once. You have to do each one separately. But now there's layer three. It's tucked inside. It's a sub layer, which just means it's a layer that's tucked inside of another layer. I'll call this one fins. And so now they are, they are on their own, um, sort of as, as their own entity. If I open up that layer, you can see that the three paths live inside of that thing. Now, another thing that we can do is we could work with um, groups. And that's what we're going to do with these little windows. We're going to take uh, one window. And I'm going to show you a way to select things of a, uh, that are of a similar um, uh, appearance. These little windows have a certain blue shade to them, right? A blue fill. And some of them are pretty small, and they're all over the place. And it could be kind of tedious for me to go through and hold down Shift and start selecting, you know, all these windows. I can do it. Obviously, it's not that hard. <laughs> but I'm just trying to give you sort of an example of something that um, could save you some time. So obviously, Shift will allow you to select multiple things. And you can see that those multiple things are all uh, represented as selections in the layers window. I'm going to do a deselect all, which is Command Shift A. I'm just going to select one of them again. And I'm going to go to the select menu. And you can see that there's something kind of down towards the bottom called same. And same has select things of the same appearance, of the same blending mode, of the same fill and stroke, same fill color, opacity, stroke color, stroke weight. Um, in this case, all I want is I want to select things of a similar fill color. Boop! And it goes and selects all of the windows at once. And that comes in really handy when you're dealing with complex illustrations and artwork. Um, especially when you might have something on top of those layers that might have a transparency um, or a blending mode or something like that. And the selection tool always favors what's on top, so it can get really hard to like you know, click on things. So in this case, you're just saying, hey, I want all the all of the little windows that are that color. So here they are. They're all selected. Instead of putting them in a subgroup, or sorry, a sublayer, thinking ahead, um, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to go to um, object, the object menu here. And up towards the top is something called group. And when I group them, you can see in the layers window, they all kind of disappeared and got bundled into something called a group. And the group has a little twirly. I can open it up and you can see the paths. What a group is, essentially, is just a sub-layer. Um, but it's, it's a bit more dynamic because it's labeled as a group, um, which allows this group to behave in a certain way that a sublayer would not. Um, so, for example, uh, if I wanted to go in and edit one of these things, let's see if I'm going to click off of it. I, don't, I haven't really shown you this yet. So, when something's selected and you want to have it not selected, you can do Command Shift A for deselect all, or you can just go click somewhere off of your artboard. I'm not, you know, that's just sometimes that's just quicker. Just go click and everything's deselected. So if I if I click on any window, they all um, select themselves now, which is a bit different than how the sublayer works. Sublayer, yeah, they're all in their their own little spot together. If you click on one, it only selects the one. However, the windows that are a group, if I click on one window, all of them are selected. It's a group. And that's kind of how groups behave. So I could move them all together with one foul sweep. Um, them being all selected, I could go up to my um, my fill and make them all black. I'm going to sneeze. Hang on. Okay, apparently if you say you're going to sneeze, you won't. That's irritating. I really like sneezing. Um... All right, I say hit undo there. All right, so what about editing um, one of these things? How do you get into it? 
what you have to do is you have to go into a, um, a space in Illustrator. It's an editing space called isolation mode. And all that really is is when you have a group, um, you double click on any of the th any of the items that are in the group and it takes you into isolation mode. Isolation mode um, sort of mutes all of the other artwork that was not a part of the group so you can focus on the elements that you want to edit. And so the first telltale sign that I'm in an isolation mode is that everything's faded except for my windows. But at the top of my window I can see that I have something called group and that there's a layer one. So group is inside layer one. Um, and then there's this little arrow thing back one level. So basically we we've gone we've like stepped into um, the layers. Uh, and now what I can do is I could select just one of these guys and I could, you know, make it bigger or uh, whatever, um, move it. You know, maybe I want my window up there or something. And then these two guys could slide over. Yeah. So now I'm getting my hands back on these windows as individual elements. Um, and, uh, and I can, you know, do whatever I want to each one. In the layers window, Another telltale sign that I'm not in my normal uh, art space is that it says isolation mode and I don't see any of my other layers. All I see is isolation mode and then group. And it's the group that I'm working with here with all these different paths of the windows. Now to get back out of this isolation mode once you've made your edit and you want to get back to the you know all the rest of the artwork you simply you can double click anywhere outside of the um, the little elements that are part of your group. So I could even just click, you know, double click on the submarine, the water, the sky, or off on the artboard. Or you can click on this arrow to go back one level and just go back all the way to where that little bar at the top is gone. If you double click, it's the easiest way because it just takes you right back instead of having to click on that arrow a couple times. The arrow, you know, that little this little thing up here, basically the navigation confuses people. <laughs> I'm not really sure why, but it does. But you know, by clicking just on layer one, um, I I'm now able to edit just layer one, and everything else is is faded. I don't have access to the water. I wouldn't have access to any other layers that I had created, just layer one. So I have to make sure that I click back again to go all the way back to the main root level. So a group is similar to a subgroup, however, it behaves differently as far as editing it goes. In order to ungroup something, and that's easy, you go to Object, Ungroup. And now those windows are no longer um, a par part of a whole. They are individual separate pieces of artwork. So um, that is the group. And uh, you'll find that grouping things ends up being great for just, you know, layer management stuff uh, and art management. Um, it's nice to be able to condense things. It's also nice to be able to keep things together so that you can make universal changes, movements, transformations, whatever. So make sure to open up this file and play with it. Um, you really do need to get used to managing these layers, creating new ones, moving el selected elements from one layer to another. And uh, seriously, like that's probably the biggest the the the, the money maker of this video that you just watched was how to how to identify a selected element in a layer with that little square that's selected and to be able to move it into another designated layer just without having to go open it up and find it and move it or copying and pasting or cutting and pasting and all that stuff. Um, so that is um, layers and groups.